In March, HB 96 passed through the North Carolina House of Representatives and it required college students to take at least three credit hours of instruction on America's founding. If they were going to attend state-funded universities, of course, including the University of North Carolina. It was called the North Carolina Reclaiming College Education on America's Constitutional Heritage Act, which is a mouthful, otherwise known as the NC Reach Act. So, as part of this, it's the students end up reading the Constitution of the United States of America, the Declaration of Independence, the Emancipation Proclamation, at least five essays from the Federalist Papers, Martin Luther King Jr.'s letter from Birmingham Jail, the Gettysburg, the Gettysburg Address, and the North Carolina State Constitution. And so it's an attempt to sort of bring back civics and inform people about some rather large events in our nation's history. <laughs> the professors are not pleased. Like, they're really upset about it. In fact, a public letter was signed by 673 UNC Chapel Hill professors arguing against this instruction. They said that it would, and I quote, replace faculty intellectual expertise with ideological force feeding, unquote. Now, the course just requires an education into some founding documents. It, it, it's a course on history. Now, history isn't ideological, or at least it shouldn't be, because it should be based in truth. And it's not even really saying like <laughs> that the professors have to say something specific about these documents, or, or say that this is an idyllic form of government, for example. I don't know, if the, if the professor wanted to say, but I think that we should live in a monarchy, or a theocracy, or whatever, that's not prohibited. The point is that people should understand the system that we do live in, and how we got here. Which you might think is, well, A, kind of basic in that we used to teach civics before college age, but anyway, um, but more than that, that, that you would just sort of want citizens of a country who vote to understand what they're voting in, you know, what kind of system they are voting in. But if history is ideological by nature, as these professors imply, then the, then the truth is essentially opposed to their ideology, because the history, um, to the degree that we're just talking about, you know, here are the documents that, were, that played an important role in different parts of our history, well, th that's, that's just truth. Like, those documents did play an important role. Um, you have you may have different opinions on different ones. I do, but the fact that they exist and the fact that they they resulted in major changes in American history, that's not controversial or shouldn't be, and it's not ideological. But really, the people who are arguing against this seem to find truth opposed to their ideology. Now, it kind of reminds me when I was, I don't know, probably 13, 14 years old, and I was back in England, and I was uh, already somewhat political. And there was this big announcement that the National Union of Teachers, which was the biggest well, teachers union in the country, had opposed teaching about Britain's history of uh, colonization, or imperialism if you prefer the term, because they were afraid that it would lead to what they called BNP-like thinking. And the BNP was the British National Party, so it was a nationalistic political party that was active and pretty, you know, big at the time. And it always kind of struck me back then as a teenager that they were specifically wanting to cut out history because they were afraid of what ideological slant it would result in in the children. Thus saying that they wanted to create an ideological slant and that the truth would get in the way. Because you would think that you would want I mean, the idea of education as it's lauded is to direct people toward the truth, or at least that's what we're supposed to be doing. That's what most parents think that they are doing when they send kids to college, to get them informed on things that are, that are actually the case. But the argument here is, is somewhat the opposite. It's, well, we can't form these people the way we want to if we at the same time give them 
some sense of history. And I kind of wonder if part of this is like, you might give them some sense of pride in, in their own history, in the foundations of their country. And how would you teach, for example, the founding of America without also teaching something about natural law, which is, you know, part of the, part of the, the United States Constitution, it was the Bill of Rights, they're based upon na the, the principles of natural law, of bringing that into fruition, not of granting rights, but, you know, of protecting the rights that were already given by God. And I think that's really the problem here, that when you start looking at these documents, you you learn about a way of thinking that they want to shield these students from a, a way of thinking that some of these students have never been exposed to the sort of idea that a a man has rights by himself for example given to him by god um, that's not something that's taught in modern schools not in modern universities and so on so it's kind of like a it would be a very much a primer a starter perhaps it's something and they don't even want to allow that. So I think that their opposition to this is incredibly telling. Uh, so I, I, I promote the legislature of North Carolina for being willing to put this forward. And it's it's really revelatory, I think, the, the pushback you're getting from from major prof from so many professors, right? If you enjoyed that video, please don't forget to like it. Also, I have other videos that you might enjoy. I have links in the description down below as to how you can support this work. So thank you so much.